Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you a simple and very universal bale that you can uh, make out of just wire and attach to the top of pretty much any pendant. It is going to work best on the top of um, a simple type of pendant where you can uh, loop it almost like a jump ring through the top and have a little um, a bale to hang from a chain or cord. So let's get started with our wire. This is going to be 20 gauge round dead soft wire. I'm using silver filled but you can use obviously whatever you like, silver plated, um, copper, brass, sterling. So what we're going to do is start off with our centimeter side and you can see I pretty much have to imagine where I am because I've been using this so much. But um, you're going to want about three and a half centimeters. And if you're making this for larger size pendants, you'll probably want to go up to 18 gauge wire or even larger. But since I am making this for a rather petite pendant, which uh, I just, um, in my previous video as a tutorial on how to make this, and you can see it's, it's um, you know, it's a nice petite little pendant. So we're going to stick with the 20 gauge wire. Okay, so I cut two of those three and a half centimeter lengths of wire. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so we're going to start with one of these and our round nose pliers. Now you need to take the flush edge. If you're using flush cutters, of course one cut is going to be flat and the other is going to be more pointed as you can see there. So we're going to start with the flush one and we're going to make a fairly small tight loop and this is going to be the loop that you use to attach the bale to your actual pendant. Whoops, stand screen here. Okay, so we're going to make a loop just like that. And let's do the other one while we're at it. So again, just making a nice tight little little loop. And you want to make sure that they're both the same. So the one behind is a little too big here. Let me just fix that up. I apologize, I'm a little bit of a, a butterfingers today. I went shooting this morning and I think my hands are still kind of protesting all the uh, the shock of that, they're kind of shaky still, so... Okay, so let's see if these are more even now. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to straighten this tail right up. So I'm going to put the bottom part of my round nose pliers right there and use the top part as an anchor to bend that top tail up. All right, and let's do that on this one as well. Okay, so after you have your loop and your tail, what I'm going to do is hammer this out to add some extra strength and um, thickness to the bale. You could skip this step if you don't have the required materials, um, but I'll just show you how I do it. So I'm going to hammer the bottom loop portion, I'll hammer it on this side, and then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and actually hammer the bale portion flat so that it's going to be perpendicular to the bottom loop. The reason I do it that way is to provide the maximum stability possible since you are using this to attach, you know, a pendant that you don't want to lose to your chain. So it's important that the bale be fairly sturdy. Okay, so let me just do the other one real quick. Okay, so now we're going to take our round nose pliers again. And we're going to form the actual bale. 
of our piece here. So I'm just making a nice oval that's a little bit taller than um, that first loop we made to attach to the pendant itself. Alright, and now we're going to trim off this extra little tail we have. And you're going to clip it off at the junction of that first loop we made with the bottom of that straight, um, that little straight portion we made. So I'm going to snip it off right here. Let me actually go this way so I get my uh, flush side. There we go. And then I'm just going to bend this little end up so that it can lie right on top of that first straight bit we made. And you can see what I did there. I just smushed. Well, now I got it crooked. One moment. There we go. I just grabbed right here, perpendicular to the bale, and just flattened that part out as much as possible. Okay. And if you still want to tweak, you know, the shape of your bale, you can you can continue doing that. Okay, and then you're going to make your second piece to match. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so you can see now we have these two identical pieces. And at this point, we're going to be attaching both of these to our pendant. So here I have the um, treble clef pendant that I have done a previous tutorial on. You can find it at the link below or on this screen somewhere. So we're going to take one of our little bale pieces and you're going to open up that first bottom loop we made. So I'm going to simply grip with my thumb to keep it flat and twist up to make an opening. Let me go ahead and do that on the other one too so you can see. So twist up. And then when you're putting this on your pendant, you want to make sure that this tail at the back is going to be at the back of your pendant. So here's the front of my pendant, front of my bale, and I'm going to keep those aligned. So I'm putting one on, I'm going to twist it back shut, and put the other one on right next to it we're going to twist that shut. And what we're going to do is actually wrap wire around this spot right here to bind both of these together. So I'm going to be using 24 gauge dead soft wire. Um, if you're using uh, smaller than 20 gauge for your um, for your bales you'll want to use obviously something smaller than 24 gauge otherwise it would be too large to work for that and what I'm just doing here is using a um, tarnish removing cloth on my silver wire just so that there's less polishing on the final piece if you are not using silver wire you don't have to do that so now we're going to cut about oh, probably four centimeters or under of this 24 gauge dead soft wire. Tip the chain nose pliers, grip it right in the middle, and we're going to make a U turn. Just like that. Go ahead and snug that up a little. Now you're going to take your pendant, make sure that both. both of your little bale pieces are lined up and we're going to put this u-shaped wire actually why did I make that such a tight bend one moment here I forgot what I was doing 
you actually want this bend to be the width of two of your 24 gauge wires, so I just widened it up a little bit. Apologies about that. Okay, take two. So you're just going to drop this onto that straight portion, as you can see there. And then holding this with your thumb, you're going to take your chain nose pliers. My camera is having fits with the focusing today. And you're going to squeeze those shut so that the ends cross over each other. Just like that. And you're going to keep closing that up until it's lying flat against your two bales. So at this point I'm kind of just maneuvering those two um, those two tails to go ahead and continue crossing over each other. And I'm just using my chain nose pliers to continue wrapping and snugging this around as much as possible. And once you get it kind of attached, you can just grab the tail and start twisting it around. And of course, tightening as you go. And each, um, each loop you do around these bales, you want to make sure that your new wrap lies flush with your previous wrap. And when you get to the end here with your little tail, you can just push it nice and flush and kind of bend it in so that it's not sticking out and it's really not that visible. Okay, so that is a pretty good looking bale. I like to kind of separate these two little wires out and make a little, just a subtle, subtle V shape. There we go. And then you can simply string it on a chain. So you can see there, it's a very nice, simple, universal bale that works well for any type of um, uh, free-floating pendant that you need to attach. Sorry, I just bumped the tripod there. <laughs> Alright, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. As always, thank you for watching and happy crafting. Stay tuned for more jewelry tutorials.